I'm Damien from TP, and I make a lot of noise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so today I'm, I'm going to speak about uh, how to get C++ builds get fast. And uh, actually, how at uh, TP we've been come to the idea that it was a good idea to merge Git and the compiler that you are using. So thank you for having me at CPPNC. Um, this talk is actually about merging Git on the build system more than the compiler, because if we merge it in the compiler, we cannot use the compiler we want if we don't control it. So it's actually merging Git and make on Ninja. And uh, because Git is good at merge, it can only be easy, right? The reason why we are doing this is because the small team at TP is very focused on solving some uh, build time problems. We are growing at the moment, and uh, there are some people that are not on this page because uh, I'm not authorized to show them yet, but uh, we are still hiring, so if you want to join our nice team that is ever growing, you are all welcome. Uh, we have a lot of uh, cool stuff to do on compilers. Um, and uh, we have a um, kind of a background in uh, embedded software development, embedded Linux builds, uh, but also cloud apps, and uh, to show it, I made the slides in HTML, so I can also do HTML. So the question that I'm going to ask is, why are builds so boring? I think we all hate uh, waiting on builds, and uh, I think the reason why they are so boring is that everyone keeps constantly looking at the watch. Um, I mean. When I was, uh, my first uh, work experience was in the uh, city, um, uh, in the town hall of, uh, of, my, of my old uh, small town in Alsace. And uh, I, I saw all the workers like waiting like 30 minutes before the end of the day, looking at the watch, waiting for the, for the end of the day to pass so we can just leave and get home. And actually, Make on Ninja looks at the watch to know if files were modified, and to know if they need to rebuild it. And developer look at the watch uh, because the C++ build are slow. So everybody is, everybody is looking, always looking at file modification time or at their own watch. And uh, that's not good in my eyes. And I can tell you, TP is a company that is in Switzerland. I'm half Swiss, half French. And uh, even with a Swiss watch, waiting on build is boring. So what can we do? Everyone has uh, probably uh, ideas and solutions already. Um, we have one thing, is uh, remote builds in the cloud uh, with TP. But that doesn't solve everything, because every time you start a machine, it's empty and you need to rebuild everything. Even if you have thousands of cores, you need to restart. So you cannot only rely on having big machines in the cloud to build faster. So what you do? You start to use pre-built packages, is what everyone has been doing uh, in the last uh, decades to uh, reuse build artifacts. But my question is, do we really want pre-built packages? Is it really something we like to do? Like, it helps like distributing code, uh, encapsulating, uh, abstracting the build complexity, and uh, this can actually uh, save you build time because you just like consume an artifact and link to it, and uh, you don't have to have the whole complexity of the build of this artifact that has probably also dependencies. So you just get it and you can use it. Um, it saves build times, but it creates other problems like you have to be sure that the package you use is going to be compatible to the compiler flags you are using. Um, it can also be very hard to track how was built this binary, if it was built with the same flag as you. Uh, there is no information that the compiler drops in there. So that's kind of, uh, of an issue, and I think it's uh, kind of an historically grown uh, necessity uh, to reuse build artifacts, and we can do better, actually. I mean, it has pro points, and I mean, if you want to deploy a uh, package at runtime, you want to make an installation of software, you should use a package manager. But when, you, when it comes to your build dependencies, do you really care about it? I'm not sure. What you want is having speed of your build and having uh, a good trustability, and that's hard to uh, follow with, uh, with package manager that requires you to upload the binary yourself and so. 
And um, one of the things we can do is to start tracking change by content so we can have like better traceability, better build provenance, and uh, also stop watch looking at the watch and at the file modification time to decide if we build. And if we plug a lot of pieces together, then we can solve all, the, all these problems. So the question is, why do Ninja and Make, that are good tools, everyone uses them, track change by file modification time? Like, all these tools do that. The reason is, it's, yes, it's less reliable than tracking the content that you compiled, but it's faster uh, than comparing and hashing files content uh, while you build, because you need to read all files through, and the compiler will also do it, so you lose time doing that. Actually, it's not even fast on Windows but to look the, the file time. It's fast on, um, on Linux and so, but uh, even tools like uh, Ninja, uh, this is an, except, an, uh, an extract of the Ninja um, uh, disk interface uh, uh, API. It uh, has a stat cache, which keeps like, uh, like the last, uh, time of the last time, modification time of the file in memory so that uh, Ninja doesn't need to reread all the time, all the files, uh, file modification. And actually, we could improve this because if you think about it, uh, what we want is the speed of pre-built packages without the pain of writing recipes, of having to upload for different platforms the binaries. We want to rebuild only what actually changed it. Like, it's not because a file has changed its time on the disk that it changes. Sometimes you might have um, uh, like a code generator that will generate a file on your disk and it will be exactly identical. Why should it be rebuilt? And uh, finally, uh, you want a fast CI on remote build resume uh, because you don't want to, say, to spend your money on uh, CI minutes, uh, so for example, on, on the, the big uh, CI uh, platform like GitHub, GitLab and so. You want to actually just have a fast feedback about what you did. So if you can reuse the cache uh, of the previous build and just build incrementally, you're gonna be happier. And so, why not just add uh, the build files to, to Git? We could just commit them. That, that should work, right? I mean, at the beginning, I thought, okay, we'll do that at TP. Um, that, that, that's not really working, actually, because um, the Git model is not fought for big binaries. Uh, most of the SCM uh, hosting, like uh, the big GitHub, GitLab, and so they will uh, be unhappy if you come with a file that has more than 100 megabytes, so you can forget about your debug build. Um, the build tree very likely contains uh, absolute paths, like your CMake cache.txt and uh, other stuff uh, will contain absolute paths, so you will need to patch them. Um, you could use Git large file support to overcome the fact that Git is not fought for. Um, for, for like storing big files. But actually, uh, that's not really powerful because it will store for each of your commit a large file. For each object that changes, it will, it will upload it uh, on a separate server, and it will download a lot of separate small files. This will be very, very slow. And it will keep it forever because you, you're not necessarily interested in keeping all history of all commits all the time. Uh, you might want to have the cache for the last state of the branches, the, the, the cache for the last uh, tag versions, but not necessarily for all commits in between. And uh, this will cost you a lot because, uh, yeah, no dedupli deduplication. And at the end, you still have the problem and then you check that all out. The file don't have the same modification time as the time you built, and uh, it will still rebuild. So, what we can do is just teach Make and Ninja to use Git so that it stops like looking at file time modification so that uh, it can like track changes and uh, build only what changes and uh, leverage uh, actually uh, this information to cache your build. So it's super cool because Git already computed all the hash. It's a cont content addressable file system. So you don't need to during the build go on each file content compute an hash. You already have it. While you edit your code, it's always updated um, if you commit them and so. Uh, and uh, you don't need to, um, to worry about uh, absolute path that will be in your build tree or in your 
uh, green script because you can use it to clone uh, the sources in an invariant path. So all the absolute path on all systems will already be the same, not be user specific or so. And it's very good at tracking changes, uh, changes that you do to the code. It, however, not good at tracking changes to binary, it's only sources. That's why we need to add one of our uh, friends to the party. Um, and uh, that means like having a way to relate to a build tree uh, to, to git commits. And this is what we did at TP with the open source project Elfshaker, which has been developed by people at uh, ARM uh, and uh, um, another project is named Many Clangs. And uh, the TP fork has some uh, like more work to done in it, like support for Windows and so on, but also uh, being able to um, track each build snapshot by git commit and determine the provenance of a build file by its uh, hash content, which is kind of um, a way to also ensure that you built it for, from this source with these flags and so on. And uh, if you add everything together, you add git, you add make or ninja, elf shaker on cloud builds, then you can start uh, enjoying fast builds. And uh, that's actually TP. And uh, it's a sponsored talk, that's why it's very salesy, right? <laughs> and uh, it works like this. Um, so basically, we take the, 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 um, the sources in your, um, in, in your folder where you edit your code. And uh, if you use already Git to uh, version your code, we use the, the Git uh, repo that you have and uh, every changes that you did on top of it, we commit them uh, in a hidden commit that is detached from, all, from your branches so you don't notice it as a user. And we mirror all the sources thanks to Git and to the different mechanism that it provides like hard links and so on. Uh, in a central location, in Windows it will be in c.tp, uh, on Linux it will be user local share tp. And then you get all your sources centralized in a, in a single uh, folder, like also for all your dependencies. And they all have then uh, the, the build tree that, that gets uh, done in a build folder uh, aside, aside to the sources. Um, and for each of the builds that you do, we'll get, TP will save a snapshot of your build tree. And we leverage actually the information of the git commit to identify which snapshot is for which builds. So whenever some colleagues of you already built something, then you just check out that branch. TP will look for the, for the build snapshot and you just have a, the build already done. Or if you change something, it will just be an incremental build. And uh, these snapshots are naturally big, usually. If you take an LVM clang, uh, it's like every time 10 gigabytes, uh, a one build tree. Uh, I don't know for your builds, but ours look like this usually. And uh, to actually be able to have a fast uh, cache uh, download and be able to have fast uh, resume, we leverage these uh, shaker packs that are um, made uh, actually with uh, ZStud compression. And uh, we actually pack all these uh, revisions. Uh, we can pack uh, 300 times 10 gigabytes, so 300 commits on the 10 gigabytes build trees in 100 megabytes. And uh, so you can easily like download this 100 megabyte pack and switch easily between branch, between version. Uh, you can bisect uh, a code base to check for, for bugs. And this is um, what TP is doing. And it's uh, leveraging um, the fact that uh, make knows how to use Git and uh, how to understand what changes so that it only rebuilds what changes and use that to uh, store the actual uh, pack for this uh, snapshot for this commit ID and put that all in a pack. And um, this allows at the end to uh, have um, a very swift uh, build resume on a CI node, a very swift uh, build resume on a new machine, also for a new code base, if you want to fork some big project and you want to make a, make a patch to it, it's, uh, it's pretty easy then to, to reuse the cache from someone. And um, this is uh, what we do at TP. And before we, I end, I will show you uh, how that, that, that looks like in practice. Um, and basically here I have, uh, I have a small project. It's uh, depending on the FMT core. Uh, like the libfmt that was uh, standardized later in C++. Um, 
in TP, I can use, use uh, the mechanism to say where I want, how I want to download it. So I say I want uh, FMT from, uh, from GitHub, GitHub FMT lib slash FMT, and I want a specific version of it. Uh, then I can use the, the fact that we bound Git to make uh, on to Ninja in the, in, in the following way. Like I can say TP build, build for macOS, and every time I do a change rebuild, and every time I do a change run the test, here there is only one test is this uh, main uh, that is being executed, so it's just like to show. Uh, and whenever I do that, TP will launch CMake and uh, mirror your source files in a central directory. Central directory. It will uh, also uh, check for uh, uh, FMTLib if it finds a cache and takes the, the version from the cache, so also in this central directory. And then every time I do a, a code change, actually, uh, I don't need to commit myself. Uh, TP will uh, commit it for you uh, in, uh, in, the, in the mirrored repository, and it will build that and it will cache the change as well. So the next time someone does exactly that change, it will be able to reuse that cache. Until you commit it, then it will be stored uh, under the actual commit ID. And uh, here it's a very small project, but if I would like to, uh, to build that, uh, to build a bigger project or so, I could also ask 2TP to build this using my CMake list here uh, on, uh, on, 20, on 128 core machines and uh, for Linux, for example, because here I'm on Mac and I need a Linux environment. And then TP will like clone your project online, use the same mechanism as the local mirroring with Git and uh, fetch the, the cache and uh, like once the machine is started and uh, build uh, the new version and uh, as it just built, it will just like uh, re-upload the cache for the new version, so you can continue uh, using it. Um, you can also run the test naturally online uh, like this. Say I want to run all tests and I want to monitor change, so whenever you, you change something to the project, you won't have uh, the effect of uh, overloading your machine with compilation processes. This will be done online. And uh, you, can, uh, you can also leverage the cache that is produced online in your local build. Uh, you can use it in your CI workflow on your own machines. Uh, this is all, uh, we are all free to use on open source. And uh, you can all run that also on your own infrastructure if you want. You just have to make some, some JSON configuration. And uh, here, as you can see, now I'm running the build on Linux. Uh, and it's uh, nurturing the cache during the compilation, and if someone wants to reuse that, it just can. And that's basically uh, what we are doing at TP. Uh, we do some other stuff that are more experimental, but I won't speak about it right now. Um, I would like to thank you a lot for your intention and for the organization of this conference. It was very, very, very good. I'm happy to take questions. Um, uh, we still have uh, some minutes. Uh, just if uh, someone is interested, everyone who registers now, uh, the first three that registers, I, bring, I brought to me uh, Swiss chocolate. So there is for the number one, there is uh, the one from Springley, and there is these, uh, these nice ones also from Lilliput. So the first, the, the first three people that register will get this chocolate. Um, I couldn't bring Swiss watches, we aren't there yet. But next time, I promise, uh, <laughs> we'll work hard and we have some nice Blancpain or uh, Philippe Patek. Thank you very much.